our daily lives is improved by chemistry. From transportation to the clothes we wear, chemistry helps bring us better food, makes our homes more beautiful, more comfortable, helps protect our health, and adds to the enjoyment of our leisure time. Now, tonight's story on the DuPont Theater. And the Liberty Bell acquired its name in 1776, when it pounded out the first proclamation of our newborn freedom. In 1777, it was removed to Allentown and hidden under the floor of a church to save it from the British troops approaching Philadelphia. It was brought back as soon as possible, and although it's been taken out several times later on, it no longer is moved about at all. The quotation on the crown is from the Bible, Leviticus 25:10. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Now over in this room, the Declaration Chamber. It was in this room that the Declaration of Independence was adopted. The furniture was used by the signers of the Declaration. And there, the chair in which George Washington sat when he presided over the first Constitutional Congress. Among the famous delegates were Benjamin Franklin, Governor Morris, George Mason, Elbrick Gary, William Patterson, Roger Sherman, and Charles Dickens. Washington is remembered by the famous words, first in war, first in peace, first in the hearts of his country. And now in this next room, if you follow me please, ladies and gentlemen, and the historic stuff. Please forgive me. I'm, I'm very sorry. Forgive you for what? What are you sorry for? Not inside. I, I was staring at you, and it was very rude of you. Isn't this rude? Well, yes, I, I guess it is. Well, I suppose you just have to forgive me for this, too. You are forgiven for everything. Please, may I speak to you for a moment? About what? Uh, about George Washington. You see, I'm a stranger in town. And so was George Washington. He was from Virginia. Well, then, of the three of us, you're the only Philadelphian. I live here, yes. I'm from New York. I'm visiting all the places of history. This is my first trip here. I, I wonder if you'd be so kind to, to show me around. You have a guidebook. Why do you need me? Well, one can't talk to a guidebook. One can't learn much from one either. Please. It's very late in the day. The places are closed. They close very early. Well, how about tomorrow? You suppose we could meet tomorrow? Tomorrow? Well, that will be Saturday. At 2 o'clock, I will be in the old city church shop. It's very nice there. Full of history. Uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, where is the old city churchyard? In the guidebook. You know where the old city church is? Old city church? Sure. Well, how many blocks is it? In Philadelphia, we don't say blocks. We say squares. Oh, sorry. How many squares is it? I never counted them. Oh, she's probably not there anyway. What's that? Oh, I was supposed to meet a girl in the old churchyard. You mean that place with the old tombstones? Yeah, that's right. Well, can you take me there in a hurry? Look. Never try to get to a graveyard in a hurry. Let it keep. Just get me there. Sure. Hop in. Do you see it? 
No. Nobody in the churchyard. Maybe you'd better just take me back to the hotel. Well, not that I wouldn't like to. But if I was you, I wouldn't give up this easy. What do you mean? Look around. Maybe she's looking for you. Yeah, thanks. Keep the change. Thanks, buddy. Hello. I didn't think you'd show up. Then why are you here? Well, because I hoped you would. I was afraid I'd never find you again. I don't even know your name. You'd have found someone else to show you the historical place. I wasn't just thinking about history. Oh, but you must. This church is almost 200 years old. Well, it's all right to sit in the pews. Oh. Everything in this church is exactly the way it was in the days of the founding fathers. The pulpit, the stone floor. In the churchyard, so many of your heroes are buried. Even some Indians. You say my heroes. Aren't they your heroes, too? Yes, they are my heroes, too, but, but I'm a foreigner. Oh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. A good deal of America was built by foreigners and fought for by them, too. May I ask you something? Of course, that's why I'm here. Oh, no, I, I don't mean about the church. I mean about you, yesterday. When I first saw you, you, you appeared to be praying. In a sense, I was. May I ask about what? Prayer is a very private matter, a kind of secret. Forgive me. I just thought maybe I might possibly help. We got such a late start today. Perhaps tomorrow you would like to visit some of the revolutionary battlefields. Yes, Germantown and Brandywine especially. I'll, uh, I'll hire a car. We can drive out. That would be very nice. I'd be happy to show them to you. Well, there's a few hours left of the day. We, we don't have to part, do we? No, of course not. Well, how about seeing what they call the uh, Independence Square Group? The buildings near Independence Hall? Yes, there's still time to see those, isn't there? Didn't you see those yesterday? Well, yes, but not with you. There won't be any difference. Yes, they will. Oh, wow, my feet. Sightseeing is a job. I never knew there were so many historical landmarks. No. Beautiful. You know, on such a reverent tour, I have a totally irreverent thought. I'm hungry. <laughs> I feel irreverent, too. Well, come on, I'll take you somewhere. No, I'll take you. And I live across from the old city church with Mrs. Morrissey. I'll fix some sandwiches and some tea. Would you like that? Well, great. It's no trouble to you and Mrs. Morrissey. Oh, no, she's a wonderful woman. You will like her. Fine. Did it really look different with me? Everything looks different when I'm with you. You would like some, some more food? Oh, no, no, thanks. I'm full up. I did so much want you to meet Mrs. Marcy, but she must be shopping. Well, I'll wait. Oh, good. But I mean, I, I think you will like her very much. I like you very much. I'm quite sure I like Mrs. Morrissey. But you don't know me. Well, give me some time. Give me some answers. That's the best way to get to know people. Look, may I ask you something? You... You have a slight accent. Is it German? Austrian. Oh. Well, tell me, how does a... an Austrian girl know so much about American history? My father, he had... Two shelves, two long shelves in his library, filled with American history books. Oh. He was a member of the Bundestag. What's that? That was like your Senate. 
When Austria was free and a republic, my father wanted to make the Austrian Republic just like yours over here. But the Nazis finished that. Both my mother and father were killed. And I came to America alone last year. I see. Perhaps I shouldn't ask any more questions. I don't mind. Well, how do you live? What do you do for work? I teach the piano to small children. Oh, well, that sounds like a happy thought. You live now in America, you give piano lessons, you live in this charming house. But yet you seem troubled. Why? I'd rather not tell you. I don't even really want to think about it. Maybe I can help you. Maybe we were destined to meet just so that I could help you. That must be Mrs. Morrissey. Oh. Mrs. Morrissey. Oh, Marcy, I want you to meet someone. Oh, I've heard all about you, young man. It was very fresh of you talking to a strange girl. Oh. But then how would you meet her otherwise? Oh, Mrs. Morrissey. <laughs> what was your name? I didn't catch it. Uh, my name is, is Julia Ritter. <gasps> Casimir Pulaski. I'm very sorry, Mrs. Morrissey, but we were so busy talking, we, we forgot all about the name. I understand. I understand. What was your name again? Pulaski. Pulaski. Well, I'll leave you children alone to visit. No, 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 no. Please join oh, us. Oh, thank you. No. Mr. Pulaski, will you stay to dinner? Well, I'm... I'm afraid I can't. I... I have some business to attend to. Oh. What kind of business are you in, Mr. Pulaski? I'm a lawyer. A lawyer? Oh, that's very good. Well, I'm off to the kitchen. She's a very jolly woman. Oh, yes, she is. Well, shall we get an early start on the day tomorrow? Yes. Your name. Why does it seem so familiar to me? You think about it for a while. It'll come to you. Till tomorrow. Till tomorrow. Julie? What a, what a very nice young man. And a lawyer, too. Did you tell him? Oh, but you should have. You really should have. Maybe he can help you. Are you going to see him tomorrow? I think so. Yes, I am sure that I am. Then do tell him. Be sure to tell him. Perhaps I will. Let me help you put away those groceries. Return to our play right after tonight's story of DuPont chemistry. These are DuPont workers, and each one is backed by an investment of $24,000. Now that's a lot of money. It represents the amount DuPont spends per worker for the tools and equipment necessary to bring you better things for better living. What does it mean to you? Why is it important? Well, it illustrates one part of our American business system that has contributed so much to our high standard of living. Now, that's a lot of money. Just a little more than half a century ago, the average worker had only inefficient tools to help him turn out a product. A low production meant low wages. And in 1900, most men had to work 10 hours a day, six days a week, 
to earn enough money to provide their families with the necessities of life. Hand labor was the word in the home as well as the factory. And the housewife had few, if any, labor-saving devices. She, too, worked long, tiring hours because out of father's small weekly pay, she could not afford to send work out. In fact, in many families, the youngsters had to work to add their earnings to the family budget and pass up an education. And with most families in those days, the standard of living left much to be desired. A half century later, we Americans had put enough money into our businesses to provide the average worker with better plants and equipment so that he could produce enough in a 40-hour week to earn twice as much as a 1900 worker earned in a 60-hour week. And now this shorter work week gives us all more leisure time to enjoy a standard of living beyond the wildest dreams of anyone who lived half a century ago. The more we produce, the more our families have to spend for the things they need and want. Radios, cars, washing machines, refrigerators and TV sets. And young people today have leisure time for fun and far more opportunity to get a good education and prepare themselves for a wide range of interesting careers. And fortunately, we have been able to raise our standard of living without giving up the spiritual side of life, which means so much to the American family. Yes, today we Americans live better because we produce more. And we can produce more because thousands of Americans in all walks of life have invested their savings in private industry, making possible better tools and equipment. Now, in the case of the DuPont Company, there are more than 165,000 stockholders in every walk of life. And it is the money that they have invested in DuPont that helps to build the plants and provides the tools and equipment that back up DuPont's 90,000 employees, helping them to work better, to live better, to bring you better things for better living through chemistry. And now, back to the DuPont Theater. He will come. I am sure that he will come, even though he is an hour late. It's all very strange, Julie, but I don't really think he will be here, not if he's a ghost. You asked George Washington to send one of his heroes because of your trouble. Well, he did send one of his heroes, but the time got all mixed up. He sent one of his revolutionary heroes, Casimir Pulaski. He seemed very flesh and blood to me, Mrs. Morris. He's very real. Of course he did. But then why isn't he here? Why should he have come at all if he were a ghost? Well, I can't answer that. But maybe the answer's in there in one of those books. He did want to visit the battlefields of Brandywine in Germantown. That's where the other Pulaski fought. It says so here. What else does it say? that he was a Polish patriot who came here to fight for the revolutionary cause, and he organized cavalry for General Washington. He was killed at the siege of Savannah at the age of 31. 31. And his body lies in the churchyard. Oh, no, that's only a memorial plaque. He was mortally wounded at Savannah, and he was taken aboard the Wasp, a revolutionary ship. But it was not known whether he was buried at sea or brought ashore to be buried. There is no known grave. Well, maybe we're letting our imaginations run away with us. Besides, your Mr. Pulaski's a lawyer, not a soldier. General Washington's Pulaski. He studied law as a student. It says so in the book. The saints preserve us. I hope he shows up. Now, I, I do not think that he will. It's the wind that pushed the door open. Julie, what's wrong? There is a pain in my heart. I can't explain it. 
there is a pain in my heart for him. Concussion. Maybe a fracture. Any identification? Name's Pulaski. Lives in New York. You can get in touch with the addresses in his wallet. Where did it happen? He was crossing the street near Old City Church. Better get him to surgery fast. Okay, boys. It is bad news, is it not? I'm afraid it is, Miss Ritter, for the moment. My request for an extension? It's been turned down. Your visitor's visa cannot be extended any longer. You already have had two extensions. There is no change in the Austrian quota? It's filled up for several years. To go back there after living here, it's like not living at all. But you'll apply for re-entry in Austria. You'll be given every consideration. Let me stay. Miss Ritter, please try to understand our position. The United States wants to help everyone, everywhere. There's just so much we can do. We even do more. If we allowed every visitor to remain indefinitely, we'd have no structure for our immigration laws. You've been very kind, you and your country. I shall never forget. You'll live here again. I know you will. I will try, but it will take so very many years. But I will never give up trying. When must I leave? By the 30th. Thank you. Please. I'm afraid we're closing. Nurse, how long have I been this way? Over a week. Will I get well? You are well, but you need rest. My New York. It seems to me that I was moved to New York. Yes, you were moved here this morning. I must get back to Philadelphia. Well, you can do that in about a week or ten days. Oh, no. I can't wait that long. I know I must get back now. Mr. Pulaski, you had a very bad concussion. You're lucky it wasn't more serious. I don't think the doctor will let you leave the hospital for at least a week. Became one. 
I was in an accident. Oh, come in, please. Thank you. Where's Julie? Why, she's in New York. New York? Well, I just came from New York. What's she doing there? Mr. Pulaski, you don't look at all well. Perhaps you should sit down and rest. Please, Mrs. Morrissey, what's she doing in New York? It's very sad. She's being deported. The ship sails this afternoon. Deported? Then that must be the trouble, the trouble that she wouldn't talk about. She prayed for help. It didn't come. Mrs. Morrissey, what time does a ship leave and what's the name of the ship? It sails at 5 o'clock. She wouldn't let me go with her. Please, what's the name of the ship? Why, it's the, the Mercedes. It sails from up here on 14th Street. If I catch the 2 o'clock train, I can be in New York at 4.30. I've got to catch it. But it's it. too late to do anything now. She has to go no. back. Oh, you're ill. You should rest. I can't. I can't. I've got to get to New York. Mrs. Marcy, if you just help me to get to the Philadelphia station, I can rest when I get on, on the train. Yes, I will. I'll get my coat. Please hurry. He told me. I was only named after that Pulaski. Oh, I'm so glad that you are real. What happened? There isn't any time. There isn't any time for anything except to get you off this ship. I can't. I'm being deported. Listen, they can't send you away right away. Not today. We're going to be married. And then we'll see about your staying. Married? Yeah, yeah, to me. Will you? Do I have much time to think about it? No. Then the answer is yes. Julie, Julie, if, if we start to kiss now, it'll be the longest kiss in history. 5,000 miles worth. But wait till I get you on land. Would there be much trouble with me staying in the United States? No, I can't guarantee that. But if there is trouble, I'll be there to handle it for you. Now, come on. If you have to go away, we'll, we'll call it your honeymoon. He, he did help me. He did send me a hero. Who? George Washington. Well, maybe he'll help me, too. Maybe he'll help me solve a legal problem. You have legal problems? Yeah, you. I'm sorry. Henry! Oh, sure. Don W. Sharp, Warren Lewis production.